Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and it's a perfect spring day here in Minneapolis, where I'm about to go and check out my favorite Minnesota Twins, play a game of baseball against the Milwaukee Brewers. And before I go and watch the game, I recorded a video talking about spring cleaning for your Google Analytics account. I wanted to share with you in this video some of the things that I'm doing to clean up my own Google Analytics accounts and the level of access I have and even give you a little checklist of items you can look through with your own Google Analytics data and your own access to accounts and decide whether or not you need a spring cleaning for your own analytics data. So check out this video and I think you're really gonna enjoy this perspective on Google Analytics spring cleaning. Let's do some spring cleaning for your Google Analytics account. But first, I wanna give a quick update on data retention. Now, if you've logged into your Google Analytics account over the last week, you can see Google has become even more overt with the data retention setting. And basically, every time that you go to one of your properties where this has not been set, if you're an administrator, then you will get the option to choose the setting and save it right in one place. And so this pops up right into your account and it's pretty hard to miss it. And if you've watched my previous videos, you'll see my recommendation is to choose do not automatically expire if you are planning to use this for historical analysis purposes. If you want your segmentation, if you want secondary dimensions, and if you want the ability to do analysis, deep analysis in your analytics data, then you are gonna to wanna to select that option. If you don't care about segmentation or looking back more than two years, then just stick with the default that Google recommends to you. Here's another example of the message that shows up in Google Analytics. Now this is gonna be going away pretty quickly. So this video has the risk of becoming out of date within the next five days from when it's released. But I don't think that's necessarily the case because I think a lot of people will ignore this warning or not know what to do. And they're gonna go and watch this video and learn what they can do with data retention and how to perform a spring cleaning on their Google Analytics account. So before we get into the spring cleaning tips that I'm about to recommend, I just want you to remember one thing, and that is that a lot of these ideas are coming into effect right now because of GDPR. People are really interested in the data we collect and cleaning it, keeping it, deleting it, whatever it is, and a lot of it is because of GDPR. But you can still retain your Google Analytics data and be GDPR compliant but you have to have a good reason to keep it. And my position remains to be that historical analysis of data collected before GDPR took effect for the benefit of your website user experience and the public good and for historical research is not a violation of GDPR. And so that continues to be my position and the more I read about it and the more I learn about GDPR, that has not changed since the time that I said that the first time. But this doesn't mean that you shouldn't take this as an opportunity to remove unnecessary data. And trust me on this one, even though I'm an advocate of not losing data, especially necessary data, I have gone through and done an extensive spring cleaning on my Google Analytics data myself. And you should consider performing a spring cleaning ASAP as well. Now I just got done with my spring cleaning and it felt amazing. If you want to know what methodology I used for this, I used something called Keep, Kill, Combine, which is something that I learned on the EOS, the Entrepreneur's Operating System framework that my company ran. Basically, you'd take your ideas, you'd put them on a board, you'd say, here's all the things we want to do, and then you'd say, do we want to keep this, do we want to kill it, or combine? Because not every idea is good, not every single piece of data that you collect is worthwhile. Some of these things you want to get rid of, some of these ideas you want to keep, and then other ones you want to combine two similar ideas into one place. And during my spring cleaning, I took every single one of these actions, and I'm going to show you how I did that right now. So here are the actions that I took. I deleted 14 Google Analytics accounts that were no longer being used. They were dormant, they were collecting dust. The only traffic that was in these accounts, at least for the last two or three years, maybe even longer than that, the only traffic that I saw in there was traffic from bots. So these are gone and no longer necessary. I also moved 20 plus dormant properties to the trash can, meaning that I moved properties that were under an account Without deleting the whole account, I got rid of tracking of several different unique domain names or just web properties in general that I wasn't using. I moved them to the trash can and it felt good. Now when I look through and I try to find properties to analyze and to look at, I don't have to go through and sift through all these different things that are junk. I go right to the areas that I want to be and these other ones, they're scheduled for deletion and they'll be out of my account soon. 
Here's an example of a deleted property, something that I set up a long time ago, and frankly, I don't use it at all for analysis, and there's no data being collected, and so I just decided to delete it outright because it's not necessary and doesn't really do me any good at all. I also set 20 plus active properties to do not expire. I used that data retention setting to make sure that my data would not expire. And the way that I did this was basically I would just go into each of the different properties that I had access to and this pop-up would happen. It would say, what do you want to do for your effect? I would choose do not automatically expire. I would save that setting and I would move on to the next one. And this might sound like a lot of work, but it took me about 10 minutes to do it. And that was 10 minutes well spent. And hopefully you're watching this video in time to put this setting into place before the May 25th deadline. And that way you won't lose any historical data if you want that for analysis. Now, you might be fine if you don't change the setting. And the reason why is this next point, and that is that I left a handful of properties with the default data retention setting of 26 months. Why would I do that? Well, because not everything needs historical analysis. Maybe you have a website that you use just for traffic, just for fun, just for experimentation without really doing a lot of analysis and it's not really mission critical to how your business runs well you don't need to keep all that old data because you're not going to be doing segmentation you might just be looking at the overall traffic numbers and those aggregated reports that you have are not being changed so what's the point of going and changing something if that's the case not only that, but I also combined several properties into one account for archiving purposes and ease of access. For example, I used to have a different account for jefflytics.com and then several other subdomains that I ran of Jefflytics and other properties that I created for different domain names. Instead of having to go into each of these things in their own account, I took advantage of the ability to move things within Google Analytics and I moved them into one account. And so the properties are all listed next to each other in one account and that saves me a ton of time trying to retrieve things, access things, and just makes it so that navigating is a breeze within Google Analytics. I removed myself from 15 accounts that I no longer wish to analyze. These are previous clients, people that I worked with under NDA, and I decided that these are no longer necessary for me to access, and I don't really want the liability of being able to access that data or to have it. So I just said I'm removing myself and I'm no longer going to analyze or have the ability to analyze these properties. And that felt pretty good in itself. Now most of you out there aren't going to have 15 accounts that you have access to, but you might have a few, and you might not be looking at them. They might just be there for historical purposes or people forgot that you had access to it. Well, I'll tell you right now, it feels pretty good to get rid of them as well. And not only that, but I've also educated 25,796 blog readers on GDPR and Google Analytics, and you all combined have spent nearly 100 hours reading this content, and I didn't even get a chance to go into YouTube and compare that as well. But this content has been resonating, it's been working really well, and I'm super excited about continuing to share my GDPR journey because I think that most of the items we read are super technical and inaccessible, and so I want to make this accessible for you as much as possible. And that's why I'm documenting my own journey as I go forward. So here are some questions you can ask yourself when it comes to analytics spring cleaning. Number one, is the data you're collecting necessary? If you say no to that, then you can probably stop collecting and you can probably get rid of it and you will not miss a beat. Your life will be better because you will not have the weight bringing you down of all this data that you're collecting that is not necessary. Number two, could the storage of the data potentially violate GDPR? If you say yes to this one, then you might want to go through and make sure that you are not storing data that violates regulations. It makes no sense to store this data and you have a little bit of a grace period right now before it goes live that you can get rid of this data that could violate the rules. Number three, is your ability to access this information necessary or is it a liability? As you saw here, my goal was to get rid of access that I don't need, so I took this one to heart and removed myself from 15 accounts myself. Number four, does your organization have an explicit data access policy? This is becoming something that's more important as part of GDPR, and I think every organization should have some kind of policy to document who can access the data. Number five, do you really need this data for historical analysis? This is another reality check where I said, Actually, no, I don't need this data for analysis, and so I just kept the setting in place without making any changes to it. And if you do an honest assessment of the data you collect, you might feel the same way as well. Number six, is more data really better? Is it really better? 
I would say the answer is no in most cases. The internet has been around long enough and we've collected enough data that we should know by now whether or not we really need this or not. And I would say that in most cases, no, more is not really better, especially when you don't have a plan with it. More data without a plan is not going to get you any closer to your goals. What you should really do is spend more time planning and figuring out what you're going to do with it, and then go ahead and collect and analyze data that has an explicit purpose. So let me bottom line it for you. This is a great opportunity to purge unnecessary data. This is the perfect time to simplify your analytics. So what are you doing for your analytics spring cleaning? Leave a comment and let me know how you are using this opportunity to clean up your act when it comes to analytics.